I would like to introduce internationally best-selling author and screenwriter, Mr. Ernest Klein, to the stage. And, uh, an up-and-coming filmmaker that you guys might uh, I really try to remember his name. He's going to do big things. Please welcome Steven Spielberg! Gentlemen, uh, Hall H, Hall H, gentlemen. Um, Stephen, you, you must have been to Hall H before. You've been in here before, haven't you? Twice. You've, been, you've been here twice before. Are there microphones? Twice. Oh, good. Excellent. Uh, Ernest, it, I, you and I are exactly, almost exactly the same age. Your book was essentially a diary of my life. Uh, what, can you just talk about what this means to be here on stage at Hall H with Steven Spielberg, who has directed your movie? Wow, well, um, that's, uh, that's a tall order. Well, like I'm sure a lot of people in this room, I grew up watching this man's movies and studying them, and um, they're kind of woven into the fabric of uh, my DNA. I learned to uh, become a storyteller uh, from this guy, and um, so uh, it's, it's been the most amazing and uh, uh, gratifying experience of my life. And Stephen, can you, can you talk a little bit about uh, the virtual world that you've created, any challenges that were different than other things that you had worked on before? Well, the virtual world was, uh, it was amazing when I read Ready Player One, when I read Ernie's book. It was like the most amazing flash forward and flash back at the same time to a decade that I was very involved in, the 1980s, but to a flash forward about a future that I think is out there awaiting all of us, whether we like it or not. And uh, so, uh, you know, the creation of a virtual world uh, took almost two and a half years of preparation to result in what will, will result at the end of March of next year. And when you read the, so when you read the book, did you instantly feel challenged by this? I mean, do you still, do you still feel challenged at this point in your career? What, what, <laughs> I mean, what, what, or do you ever just wake up and you go, it's Steven Spielberg. Oh, that's a mirror. Like, do you, does it ever? <laughs> no. No, I, I read the book and I said, they're going to need a younger director <laughs> for this. It was, it was really, uh, it's, it's more than uh, you could ever imagine, Ernie's imagination, in taking all of us where you took us. And I had no idea at first how I was, as a filmmaker, going to get any of you there. But he was the guide. He was the handbook for doing that. Excellent. Please welcome Ty Sheridan, Olivia Cook, TJ Miller, Ben Mendelsohn. Zach, let's talk, just really quickly, let's talk about the job that you guys had taking this novel and turning it into a movie. Because obviously, when people read a book and it's very personal to them and they, they sort of project what they see, what were some of the challenges and how did you guys go about uh, uh, being able to take that onto the screen? Wow, well, it was super easy. Um, we just kind of, no. Uh, <laughs> I think Stephen would back me up in saying this was the most complex, it's definitely the most complex movie I've ever worked on and I think Steven uh, might agree with me. Uh, there's so much material, there's so much stuff in the book that you can use that just to find a way to winnow it down and tell a story that can fit into a reasonable length so that's not 11 hours, um, uh, that in itself was a challenge. But uh, to be honest with you, I thought, well, this will never happen. We're never gonna be able to make this movie because yeah, we need like Steven Spielberg to direct it or otherwise we're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, when they told me they were going to send it to him, I was like, oh, he's never going to do it. So, uh, yeah, that made everything a lot easier. <laughs> that, that really helped to get the only guy who could make this movie yeah. to direct the movie. Yeah. Uh, Ty actually has a, a VR production company. Is this correct? Yeah. So, so and what, like what are you working on right now? Oh, you can't say? Uh, no, I... Um I mean, I was obsessed with virtual reality when, when I heard about this project, and, and I was like, oh, holy shit, uh, Steven Spielberg's doing a VR movie. I can't wait to see that. Uh, but uh, yeah, and so, I mean, just to be, just to be in, even in, involved in um, the smallest 
Anchorman, I think, would have been, I'd have been so fortunate. But, uh, you know, now here we are at Comic-Con, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here with all you guys. Uh, yeah! Teach, you're just dying to... You're, tell everybody that I'm wearing my Elliot hoodie. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Oh! Yeah! Oh! See, Steven Spielberg, and I always refer to him in his full name, Steven Spielberg will... Uh, he won't. He doesn't like to reference, like in a meta way, his own movie so much. So I dressed up as sort of with Back to the Future uh, shoes. I did the whole thing. I'm in the spirit of Comic Con and Ready Player One. I feel so stupid because I just wore a Jurassic Park patch, and I'll be like, "He's gonna love this." And then you're like in nine characters. I feel. I feel shamed. This isn't even. It's not even a real. <laughs> Uh, I took it off, yeah, yeah. The, the head of Wonder Brothers was like, Jurassic Park, huh? I'm like, it was for Steven! <laughs> so, I we'll just like, threw it at the audience there. Uh, Olivia, I want to talk a little bit about how uh, most of the characters in the film have a human version and an avatar, so can you talk a little bit about the, the creation of those two different types of characters? Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, these avatars are sometimes the idealized version of themselves or a completely different creation. So kind of working with that, with that duality in mind, because some of us in motion capture, we had to um, adopt different characteristics and different physicalities. So to work with that was really fun and, and interesting and unlike anything that I've had to do before. And a challenge for us all, I would say, to speak on behalf of everyone. So for Ernest, because this book came out about six years ago, and uh, were you surprised, are you surprised, I mean, is this so surreal? Are you surprised at how close you are to this vision? And is this the vision that you imagined when you were feverishly typing away? Is this what you saw in your head? Uh, it's better than that. I, uh, you know, the whole time I was writing the book, it, I, I assumed it could never be a movie because of all the different, I kind of wanted to mash up pop culture and pay tribute to everything in pop culture that I love. And um, I, I assumed that it could just never work as a film, but that's why I was so, you know, gratified when I think really the only two guys uh, could, who could have made this movie uh, came on board. Zach's work is a big influence on me. me. He wrote Last Action Hero, which is one of my favorite uh, yeah. films, yeah. and uh, and kind of the first movie where a movie fan gets trapped inside a movie and uses their movie knowledge, uh, you know, to survive. And so, uh, and and I just had the best uh, best experience. Uh, uh, with, the, with the adaptation, but as far as like virtual reality coming about, that's what's amazing to me about this film. This movie is going to expose so many people uh, to the concept of virtual reality that I think it's going to change the speed with which virtual reality is adopted by our civilization. It's really, uh, that's the power of movies. Um, so it's really uh, uh, exciting. Last Christmas was the first Christmas where you could buy virtual reality headsets. Uh, you know, commercially available. So it's it's weird to have this all come about at the same time. I can't imagine why people in today's day and age would want to escape actual reality. I mean, there's no <laughs> reason that I can think of. But I guess if the kids like the VR, uh, Ben, can you do you have any stories? Anything that was fun for you about working on the movie and working with Steven? Nah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, that was it. Everyone just leaves um, awkwardly. Yeah, uh, uh, hi, I love you guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, it was, it's awesome. I mean, if you turn up to work and Steven Spielberg is your boss, come on. Everything else is just gravy after that. Uh, we have some time for uh, audience Q&A. If you guys want to ask a couple of questions, we have just uh, about eight minutes or so. Hey, Mike! Hey! How you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. Uh, my question is, I saw some of the iconic... Uh, Video game stuff, and is uh, Sinistar going to be in the game? Because I do a good Sinistar. I hunger. <laughs> Sinistar. Sinistar. Yeah. I don't know if Sinistar. I don't know if Sinistar made it in, man. But you could probably see one of the uh, ostriches from Joust in the teaser exploding and turning into an egg. There's there's so much video game stuff, uh, classic video game stuff hidden in this movie. It's going to make you happy. Well, nothing's stopping you when you watch the movie from just sitting there and going, "I am Sinistar." Like you could totally just do that, Mike. <laughs> Uh, good to see you, man. Hey, what's your name? My name's, Lu my name's Luis. What's your question? So my question is, is for the art there. Um, just when you, when you wrote the book, this was before VR became a very popular thing. So how does it feel knowing that VR is pretty much becoming what it almost is already? Uh, it's really... Uh, uh, what, 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 TJ. No, we're, it's not. Behind. There's a guy right behind him that everybody wants to hear a question from that guy also. <laughs> In the back. Someone cut back. Right there. Yeah, back. So he should go right after, but sorry, so should we, nobody's, nobody's laughing, go ahead. 
I'm sorry, what was your question again? Oh. <laughs> uh, so pretty much your book was the forefront for modern day VR. So how does that make you feel that you pretty much wrote the, bl the blueprint? Oh, you're so kind. Uh, you know, it, it makes me feel a little bit like Arthur C. Clarke, you know, uh, predicting the satellite before it was actually invented. But when I wrote Ready Player One, I was standing on the shoulders of a lot of science fiction giants like William Gibson, who wrote Neuromancer, and Neil Stephenson, who wrote Snow Crash. Um, so I was not the first person to envision virtual reality. I feel very fortunate, though, that I wrote a book kind of predicting the potential of virtual reality right at, uh, at the time that it was about to come about. And that was the most amazing thing to me, like companies like Oculus and HTC Vive, they give copies of Ready Player One out to all their employees employees to help inspire them and show them the potential of virtual reality. So it's just a, it's a, it's a huge honor. It would be the second biggest honor of my life. It was a little bit more accurate than Lawnmower Man, I think, also. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a question from the guy. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This question is, when are you going back to your home planet, TJ? That's his question. <laughs> Once the task is done. <laughs> Mr. Steele. <laughs> <E -T> <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Spielberg, how many times did you read the book before you took on the project, and what stood out the most to you that you said, I got to do this? Will they let me get away with that? Please. Thank you. Will they let me get away with putting some of my own movies in this movie and, and not be vilified for some kind of grand act of you know, grand larceny of vanity or something like that? Because so many of the iconic moments that were chosen by Ernie happened in the era of the 80s that I was very much involved in. Um, so, you know, I had to leave a lot of myself out or, you know, I would have had to defer to another director. But th for me, the thing that really made me want to tell the story more than anything else was the amount of um, the kind of uh, world that 2045, 44 gives to people, which is so dystopian and so much you know, uh, you know, people are leaving the country, and all of a sudden virtual reality gives you a choice, gives you another world you can exist in, and you can do anything in that world, uh, anything you possibly could imagine, because there are haptic suits that haven't come on the market yet that give you a kind of feedback that approximates touch, sensuality, and pain. And so that interaction between real life and virtual life by the third act of this movie is almost non-existent. And that in the book is what made me want to jump into the movie. All right, uh, what, what exactly got into the uh, brainstorming behind like, like you know, from, from the footage you saw, like we saw DeLorean and the Tron cycles, like what exactly like, was the inspiration for you to be like, I want this thing and this thing right next to each other for that scene? Well, a lot of it's in the book. I own a DeLorean. I drive a uh, DeLorean because of this. When I first met Stephen, I brought the glove box lid of my DeLorean to the meeting and uh, pulled it out and asked him if he would sign it, and he did. And then I asked him, Has anyone, have you ever signed a DeLorean before? And he said, no. And I said, you know, do you know who the only guy in the world with a Steven Spielberg signed DeLorean is? <laughs> this dude. This guy. But, so that's why it's so amazing uh, that it ended up uh, in the film. But a lot of it, you know, uh, a lot of things that are maybe major uh, events in, uh, in the book will only be mentioned uh, uh, briefly in the movie or be in the corner of a frame, but all of it's still in the spirit of, this, uh, uh, of in the book. And it was, that was, what was one of the most fun parts of the production for me was having, uh, uh, hearing Steven and Zach uh, and other people on the cast like, come up with ideas of things to uh, uh, insert in the film. And then because it's Steven, a lot of, most of them said yes. And so they ended up like, how amazing is it to see the Iron Giant, you know, uh, fully pho photorealistic. Yeah, the Iron Giant is a real major player in this story. <laughs> Excellent.